All right, hello and welcome to my Hotline Miami in Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be covering sound, music, saving sound volumes to the file and little sliders to edit the volume. So yeah, I'll just... Oh, fuck off, what is that? Put off. That's new. This pause. Okay, that was weird. Oh, that was why. There we go, sorry. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, I'll just give you a quick demonstration. So play, play, and you can hear music, picking up sound, weapon sound, boom, boom. Punched him out, just like Matt Tyson. <laughs> yeah. And as you can see, yeah, weird. Get rid of those, and as you can see, there's like a little slider, so I can turn that down, these down, and when I press escape, no volume. Yeah. So yeah, I will quickly I will show you how this is done. So basically, we first we've got the pause menu, which controls the volumes and the saving of file, the saving of the data, and the GUI basically. So we've got. The GUI stuff, like for the scaling, which you've seen before. Got some GUI styles for buttons, which aren't used anymore, actually. I don't think. No, I use text, so I should probably get rid of the other two. Sorry, this is just because I copied the code over from Loud or Quiet, because I had similar systems in place. So I thought I figured I might as well kill two birds at once, and just check that it hasn't produced any errors. Nope, that's good. Okay, uh, so basically, We've got a new class called a settings writer. Oh, before, well, just to rewind a little bit, you've got to import these three. These three are basically taking care of uh, writing to files and reading from files. Uh, I think they were, they were the same ones used in the uh, high scores and knowing if we didn't unlock the level. So that's the same. Uh, we've got a Boolean, which is basically just, if this is true, it'll stop time and display the GUI. And if it's false, it won't. Uh, GUI style just controls what the GUI looks like. Uh, settings writer is a class I've written, which is just is a private class just below this, so I'll show you, that basically controls whether it, uh, but basically just controls writing and reading from files. Uh, we've got two static floats, which are public, basically so any file can access the volume uh, values and it'll be the same. So yeah, uh, I think I, this is just does. I think this just fixes a bug. I'm not quite sure what it does, but it's something to do with the serialization. So it just leave it as it is. I don't know what, what, quite what it does, but it works because I found it on a bug report which I used to fix a bug. Anyway, so I've got a new settings writer, and this will basically just output. It's more of a convenience thing. It'll output as an error, but it's not actually an error. It basically just shows you where the file will be written to. So in my case, it's in the application support folder, but I'm on a Mac. So if you're on Windows, it'll be somewhere on the C drive and it'll save it as a someone settings.dat and it'll tell you if the file exists as well. And basically on the start, it checks if the file settings.dat in the persistent data path, which is a folder that the game can write data to exists, then it'll load it, else it'll create a new one from the values half, uh, 0.5 and 0.5. And yeah. And then it'll check if the, if you press escape and pause this false, it'll set it to true and stop time, else it'll stop, it'll set it to false and set time to, it'll re-enable time so enemies can move and whatnot. And it'll set the volume and save the volume changes if you've made any. So basically, uh, I'll explain it more how it saves when I get down to it. But yeah, uh, set volumes. All right. Uh, this basically just finds all the audio sources in the in the scene, and then it'll check if the game object with the audio source has the music controller. It'll use the music value, else it'll just set the normal sound effects value. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It just loops through all of them. This for each will just take every audio source in here, so you don't have to do for in equals whatever to the end. So that's good. Uh, GUI basically has the GUI scaling. 
pretty much normal stuff. Uh, but it has, if paused is true, it'll draw a box just as a background and then have a label for the sound effects and the music. But we also have a new thing called a GUI horizontal slider, which as you saw here, not there, here, play, play, basically a horizontal slider. You slide and it'll go between a value. So in this case, it's between zero and one because that's what the audio sources use for volume. So yeah, so basically this sets the SFX valve to whatever, it's not like specific to what it is, but it'll just give you a value between zero and one that's relative to where you've moved the thing. So it takes a rect, the value you're changing and the limits, so in this case zero and one, and basically it'll return a value which you set to the SFX value. And if we go back up here, once you've made the edits, it it sets the volumes just because it the volumes it would be this is I think this is more efficient to do it than having the volume check, having it each individual object check if the volume is different. So it just say yeah, it set once, but uses a bit more memory because it has to grab the audio sources. Yeah, and now we get onto the settings writer class, which basically uses a file path called of application to persistent data path, which is where your game can write to data to on the hard drive, as well as the settings.dat file, which is basically just a file. It stores this class, settings data, uh, which has just two floats, which for sound effects and music, and basically it'll create a binary formatter and creates a file at the set the location, so persistent data path plus the file data path on the end. And then it'll create a new, uh, on the loading one, saving one, sorry, it will create a new settings data class and assign the values from the static uh, values in the pause menu class, which, so we don't need to assign anything, uh, send the pause menu class through to this uh, class. Hmm. So we can just grab them straight away, which is kind of convenient. Then it'll serialize, serialize the file. Don't forget this bit, because this is basically just, it writes, this writes the data to the file, and then you can just close the file pretty much and then it's a similar thing for load set load the setting so it'll find if the file exists so you've actually got so if the file exists at the location so persistent data path and file path it'll basically create a binary format and open the file at there and cast it as the settings data so it'll read it as if it was that and that allows it to get the values back out and then you just assign the values to the pause menu. You can do that through just saying the same way as you read them because they're static, they'll all be the same. So you don't need to set, specify the instance of a class because they're static variables. And if the file doesn't exist, it will just save the settings. So it'll go back to here and write a file from the default values of the pause menu, which is just 0.5 and 0.5. Then it'll load them again, just to make sure that everything's running smooth pretty much. Okay, and that was the longest bit of class that we got. So I'll just show you. Can I, is it still up? Yeah. So see, it'll. This is basically the uh, just showing where it stores the settings. Dot that. So as you can see, it's under application support, default company hotline memory tutorial settings. Dot that. And I don't know why that's so pain in the ass. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. It doesn't crash the game, so I'll be fine. So yeah, and basically, the music controller. This just gets the volume and sets it at the start. And you could have more advanced uh, controls in here. For example, if you wanted to stop, you could just have a public void that says that has AOS dot stop on it and play and whatnot. And yeah. Uh, audio controller. These are basically put on the player and the enemies. Uh, these basically contain the sound effects for firing the SMG, firing a shotgun, picking up weapons and melee attacks. And basically these are calls from the respective attacking scripts just to play the sound effect. And yeah, and it'll set the value to sound effects value as well. Uh, volume check. Right. 
this is added to uh, all right these are added to these are on all objects that have a audio source you, I placed them manually uh, what they do is it basically checks if it's like either the music if it's got an audio source it'll check if it's the music controller or the uh, just a sound effects thing and it'll assign the volume to it if it's not already been assigned else if it doesn't have an audio source it'll just destroy itself because it's not needed uh, this is here because if you're like uh, instantiating enemies like while the level is running they might not be uh, the right volume level if you don't and that would be a pain in the ass so that's just a quick way to make sure that once you've created something it will be the right volume and as you can see on the heavy attack we've got uh, it just gets the audio controller that's on the enemy so as you can see let's load up the level I think we can see that I've added to the enemies we've got an and the player we've got an audio source and an audio controller script so as you can see it's got four sounds that I've downloaded from freesfx.co.uk so a small caliber gunshot for pickups shotguns SMG and a melee which I know the sounds aren't that good because I've just quickly grabbed some just to demonstrate how to do it but yeah so basically if the player has been punched uh, it'll play the melee attack sound and it's a bit more complex for the enemy normal enemy weapon controller because they can do more than just punch so what I've done is every time the enemy has done an attack so in this case in these cases is fired a shot at the enemy or if it's done a melee attack so this is just this makes sure the sound is played when the attack's connected or in the shotgun's case where it's just the gun's case when it's just fired it has a uh, decide sound effects uh, bit of code it basically checks does the enemy this is the same to play one as well does the enemy slash player have a gun is it a shotgun if it is it'll play the fire shotgun if it's not it'll play the fire SMG and if it's an audio if it's not got a gun they'll just play the melee attack uh you could extend this of course by using the name of the current weapon or something along those lines to work out if you should play specific sound effects this is just a demonstration of what kind of a thing how you go about playing them to uh, specific instances of a different sound or whatever so yeah you could extend that by using the more complex criteria of how to inside the sound it won't be too hard just longer if statement or a case statement or whatever same in a player but this time we've got uh on the set weapon we've got it'll play the pickup sound we did have this in the enemy sound effects one enemy weapon controller but it was annoying to hear like 30 odd enemies play the same sound effects mm -hmm. at the start so basically we've got Pick up weapon sound, and then we've got the same to side sound effects, which gets the same audio controller. And yeah, we've got a uh, decide SFX here and here and here. And uh, probably should have a break window sound, but we don't because I was just trying to be quick with this tutorial. Okay, so that is pretty much it. But now I have a new thing to just quick plug for my game loud or quiet which i've released a new uh update for which is the 1.2 update so it's you know, so i'll just go quickly dashboard loud or quiet uh basically it's the 1.2 update which i need to do uh more screenshots for because they're outdated now Basically, I've remade all the levels with a better level making technique, which makes them look better. Fixed bugs, made sprites look better. What new weapon system, better pathfinder. I've fixed some pathfinding bugs and like hints and objectives, so whatever. So go play that. It's really good, I hope. But yeah, it is really good. Go play it. It's free anyway. What you got to lose? So yeah, it's on Mac and Windows as well. And yeah that's it all so i'll just quickly go over the uh pause menu thing if you'd like to 
screen like pause now and then like just write down the code because that's how I help I learned how to do stuff so so start update set volumes on GUI the class settings right remember to have class uh, just here just so it was right this could be a separate class but I just put it in here because it's easier because it's only really referenced from the pause menu and the settings that data uh, music controller, audio controller, volume check, the attacking, it's basically just the code to play the sound is literally just that, but you have several different methods to do it. So yeah, that was audio. Cheers for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. If you've got questions, errors, whatnot that I've missed, leave a comment and I'll help you. Yeah, bye.